Okay. Now we come to a section I'm going to call uh, Physics Bootcamp Addendum. This addendum will be the topics that would be covered in uh, usually what we, what we call Physics 4. Uh, it would be topics of modern physics, including such topics as relativity, atomic physics, nuclear physics, and particle physics. I'm going to cover them at the level of the physics boot camp, so they're introductory, so that you can have a feel for these topics and under, uh, basic understanding, so that when you do go and take a more advanced course, you have a more uh, head start, okay? So <clears throat> we have question one. We're, we're going to do similar to how we did with the other uh, test review questions. We're going to have a bunch of questions, then we'll have some more problem-solving type of uh, questions, right? So the first question says, question one, suppose you and your sister travel in space in such a way that you notice a slowing of time for her. Your sister will notice that your time runs what? So will your sister also notice that your time is slower than hers? Uh, A says faster than hers. C says the same as hers. Okay. So uh, we're going to use the postulate one of relativity. Einstein's theory of relativity is based on two postulates. Uh, Einstein's postulate number one of relativity says that the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. That's postulate one. Postulate one. The laws of physics of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames. Now what that amounts to and what it boils down to is that you can know you can't do any experiment if you are there's two reference frames. Let's say one is standing still and uh, one is traveling in a rocket uh, with a certain velocity v. So uh, by saying inertial reference frames, we mean reference frames that are going um, relative to each other at constant speed. So that's the most important thing, constant speed, right? So basically what this postulate boils down to is that uh, they can't do any experiment to determine whether they are moving or not because all laws of physics will behave the same in uh, reference frames that are not accelerating right so if this guy says i'm going to throw a ball up and then you will come back to him right the other person throws a ball up in their reference frame and it also comes back to them. So who is the one that is moving? You can't really determine, right? If this person looks at that person, they will think that person is the one moving to the right. If this person looks at this person, they will think that this person is the one moving to the left, right? Oftentimes this happens in a um, situation, for example, you are parked next to a person, maybe it's a red light, and what happens sometimes is the person to your uh, to the side of you, their car starts moving backwards a little bit for some reason, right? Hasn't this, hasn't this happened to you where if the person next to you is moving back, you begin thinking that you're the one moving forward, right? So all of a sudden you press the brakes to try to stop your car, then you realize your foot was on the brakes, right? Because the person next to you was moving backwards, you thought you were moving forward, right? So Imagine that were to happen um, uh, indefinitely. The person next to you moving backwards constantly, you're standing still with respect to the ground, right? Now, if that was in outer space and the person were to move back, it would be the equivalent of that person standing still and you moving forward, right? The only reason you know in this instance that you're the one standing still is because you have the foot on the brake, right? And you are on the ground and with respect to the trees and with respect to the buildings, you are the one standing still. But if this was happening in outer space, there would be no way of knowing whether you were the one standing still or the other person moving backwards or forwards. So that's basically what this postulate one boils down to. So in this case, what's happening here is the phenomenon of what's known as time dilation, right? 
So you have, this is your sister, and you are here, and you observe your sister, and their clocks are moving slower, right? So the clock is moving slower there than your clock. And then your clock is moving faster, okay? <clears throat> so uh, this is known as time dilation. Now, if your sister looks at you, right? Let's say uh, your sister is in the rocket going at a constant velocity. If your sister looks at you, is, is, it, is she gonna think that your time is uh, faster than hers? Because you, see, you're seeing her time going slower, ticking, <coughs> ticking a lot slower than yours. Is your sister gonna agree with you? Is she gonna say, yes, you are right. Uh, you, uh, since I'm the one moving, yours is moving faster than mine. Or is it opposite? And then she's gonna look at you and then you're going backwards and your clock is the one running slow. So her clock takes normal, normal, normal. And then your clock is running slow. So in a given amount of time, the clock has, the, the watch hand has turned more, yours has not, right? The answer is that she will also see you going slow, right? The choice is B. Because otherwise, if she didn't see yours going slow, then you can determine who's the one moving, okay? Uh, if you both agreed that hers is the one moving slower, then you would both come to the conclusion that she is the one that is moving, right? But the postulate one says, you can't determine whether you are the one moving. Okay, if you are going at constant speeds, right? So the choice is B. She will also see your clock as running slow. Now, a lot of people get this problem confused with what's known as the twin paradox. In the twin paradox, you have a person here on the earth, and then a person gets in a rocket, goes to some far away star uh, close to the speed of light, let's say it's a 0.9 the speed of light, and then that person returns. The person returns, and then the twin paradox says that during that time interval, the person in the rocket, so let's say this is your sister, if your sister went and came back, let's say she has aged 10 years, right? How long will you have aged, right? So it's gonna end up that you will age a lot more, maybe 100 years, maybe 200 years, uh, depends on how fast she went. So let's just say for the sake of argument, you aged 50 years, right? <clears throat> Later on, I'll show you how to do the calculation for this. So in this sense, there is, sen um, in this problem, there's a sense in which they are agreeing. When she steps out of the rocket, she's only 10 years older, and the person that stayed on Earth is, uh, has aged by 50 years. So they both agree on that. So if that's the case, they, don't they both agree that her clock is running slower because she has aged only 10 years? People are gonna say, yes, they do both agree that her clock runs slower and therefore his clock, the brother's clock is running faster. So people who think that would have put A here. Suppose you and your sister travel in space, they would have put, uh, she is gonna think your clock is running faster than hers because of this twin paradox. The answer is that no. Uh, in this case, they're both gonna say each other's clock was running slower, right? They're both gonna say each other's clock is running slower. If that's the case, how can you convince the sister why did she not age as much as her brother, right? Why has her brother who stayed on earth aged more if his clock was running slower? The reason why in this case this works is because when she is picking up speed to go to um, the faraway star, there's a region here in which she is accelerating. There's some acceleration, right? She's picking up some velocity, She's accelerating, so in a sense, she actually does know she's the one moving, right? And then she goes at constant speed over there. When she turns around, 
she has to decelerate, right? So there's some deceleration, negative acceleration, right? And then when she turns around from the star, she has to accelerate again, going this way, or maybe we could put negative here, since it's to the left. So she decelerates, she accelerates with this way, and then by the time that she stops here, there is a, a acceleration is going to be positive. So her reference frame is not a constantly moving reference frame. So what ends up happening is that in the middle, while she's going at constant speed, yes, she does think that uh, his clock is running slower, but because she is shifting reference frames, she's slowing down and picking up speed, there's gonna be issues with what's known as simultaneity, okay? The simultaneous clocks uh, on one reference frame are not simultaneous in other reference frames. So to make a long story short, what's gonna end up happening is she's gonna think that uh, the person on Earth, their clock is running slow, but once in a while it's jumping. There's jumpings and uh, uh, immediate shifts of clock, right? <clears throat> so it's gonna end up that even though he runs slower, because of these jumps, uh, he actually lives a lot more years. Uh, the clock has run much faster on his, and they're both gonna agree that he is the older one. So don't let the twin paradox confuse you and have you put A here. The answer is B, okay? Thank you very much.